dreaming of owning a property in a prime location with great proximity and fantastic neighborhood, EJ Investments Sanyang Seaview Estate is the best choice you have been waiting for. Our Sanyang Seaview Estate is approximately 15 minutes drive away from the busy hop of Busubi roundabout and into the heart of nature where you can have a peaceful and relaxed lifestyle with your family. You can buy a finished four bedroom story with five year flexible payment plan or a service plot with two year payment plan option. With over 300 homes, you will enjoy big tar roads with covered drainage, modern electrification with solar street lights, gated entrance with security post, and a breath-catching experience of our beautiful sea view and lake view. You can own a home today at our Sanyang Sea View Estate. Call us today on 446-4838 or 325-9220. Visit our website on ejinvestments.net. EJ Investments, first in property. Another beautiful Saturday, and this is the brunch here on Kerfatu with me, Joy Wama. And of course, I'm not alone in the studio. On my immediate right, I have Mr. Lamin Cham, who's from the Standard newspaper, and of course, our very own Mustafa K. Dabo of Kerfatu. Welcome, gentlemen. Thank you, and welcome. On today's program, we will be just on the newspaper review. Lamin Cham is going to be taking us through the TRRC, that's the Truth Reconciliation Reparation Commission, and also the split in parliament over the NAM Sakin. Senegalese election and also about the Gambians that were deported from Germany. Um, Mustafa would further take us through the revolution of the information uh, disseminated uh, during a TRRC hearing on Wednesday on the communication between Mr. Alaji Kani, Yankuba uh, Koli, and Fatma Tujahumpa Sisi and also the controversy it has generated. Uh, of course, Mustafa would further take us through uh, Kumba Jaita's firing and also how she was denied a parliamentary uh, committee meeting, how she was denied um, chairing a parliamentary subcommittee meeting on trade and regional integration. And he should also dive more into the deportation of Gambians from Germany. Mr. Lamin Cham, take us through what you have for us. Yes, thank you very much and welcome to our viewers all over the world. This week, of course, then, we will start with the TRRC. It was widely covered in the newspapers. And we also have a bit of the Senegalese elections. The split in parliament between parliamentarians over whether the president has a legitimate authority to remove a nominated member of parliament. Now, these were the major stories that dominated, uh, you know, uh, the, conventional, in the, the conventional media reports throughout the past week. Now, the TRRC have gone to a uh, second break, but just like the, form, the, the other session, I mean, they stopped with a bang. I mean, the break, I mean, the latest, the latest sitting, uh, you know, will take us right through to the next session, simply because of its, um, its nature. I mean, the, the gruesome details that came out um, in terms of uh, what happened in November. 11 to the six soldiers, seven or uh, about seven soldiers who were known to have been killed, as well as the late Osman Koro Sise, uh, the Minister then of Finance under the AFPRC junta. That was the pick of the, um, you know, the testimonies of the week. But there were earlier ones from people like Dembanjai, who was there very close to the system from the very beginning. And then you had uh, Said, Said uh, Ablai Ture before him, uh, Ablai Ture before him, Ablai Dabo. Dabo before him, and, and all of these people were talking about what happened in November, November 11. Now, for me, my perspective was this: um, before, until the testimony, there were conflicting reports as to whether there actually was a coup planned 
on November the 11th, uh, as opposed to what the junta has said, that you know, many people believe there wasn't a coup. But from what I've heard, especially from the last testimonies, it looks like there actually was a plan to get rid of Jamme and, and, and Sabale, Edward and others, based on the fact that one, for me, I always thought that the senior soldiers who lost their lives in that attempt never actually respected uh, Jammeh and his people. Not least because they were genuine in the ranks, they were indisciplined, they were unprofessional, and according to them, they were maltreating um, civilian detainees and abusing power. And they said that was the reason that they attempted to overthrow the government. So the testimony showed, kind of now a little bit convinced me that they are certainly was a plan to get rid of them. But <coughs> it looks from the testimonies also that these men, there was no firefight. I remember listening to Sabali's voice, Sana Sabali said um, a few soldiers lost their lives. Some soldiers lost their lives in the process to overthrow our government. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, the previous night there was a um, lot of fire. People of Bakao woke up to, what well, were in the middle of the night? They slept with big gunfire, etc., etc., what you're talking about. It looks now that it's increasingly looking that there was no firefight. The men who planned to take over from Jammu were actually arrested and summarily executed. If you are, if the testimonies are anything to go by, um, if you look at the testimony of um, uh, Mr. Kang, the latest one, he alone appears to have confessed to nine killings. He said he was involved in three incidents, and the first one, two people died. That is uh, Fafanyan and Asiru Kemal, I guess. Mm -hmm. The second one was when they went to the ranch, and uh, in between them, Edward, Peter, Abukari Jata, he alleged, and so many others, they killed uh, seven soldiers. And then, the, 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 the one execution that really shocked the world, was Usman Koros, he said, he, again he was there. That one was terrifically described and, and, and indescribably uh, unbearable, absolutely to anybody who, who has the last, who have not lost the last rate of human dignity. Because, uh, but then this TRNC, we were prepared. We were told that there will be testimonies that will really, really, really burn our hearts. And we've been asked to take it in good faith and just, you know, to, to take it as, it was a misadventure in our history. But how much more do you think <coughs> Gambians can take from the TRC um, as, we, as we went through to, clearly, there are more gruesome descriptions of what happened in the last 22 years, Mr. Well, well I, I think it's, it's uh, for me, the TRC is a necessary uh, uh, institution in this country. Uh, not only is it important to have close or like, for instance, they are going to Kenneth Silas said, this is an article that when you came to the situation of the government, at least that very day, Kenneth Silas' family could go to sleep knowing what was the last word. Uh, and his story is a very, it's a very emotional one. This is a guy who was to marry uh, a month before yeah. he was killed. Yeah. Um, he had already planned to get married. Yeah. And then unfortunately he was executed. I, I did a story on him after 20, December 2016, then 2017. Uh, so for me the TRRC is important. It's important and... Uh, I think people will be able to emotionally accommodate what comes out of the TRRC because it's a necessary, it's a necessary institution for us to have necessary, very necessary, to move from the past, so that people not only know what happened to their loved ones, what their last words were, but also who killed them. So then, it will help us to 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 to, to deal with the past in ways that the courts cannot help us. Uh, uh, now, still on it, before we move on, um, what kind of characters 
Are you now making out of the men who seized power and run the government as a junta? I was, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, until recently, people might say, okay, all these alleged atrocities have been committed. We have never had of Jammey. But Devan Jai, who was protocol chief of staff, very close to Jammey, admitted, said uh, that Jammey is one who ordered. In fact, that's the killing. Of, in fact, that's of, what makes Demba yes. the, the the star witness of uh, the week. Yes, he made actually it. not Kanye. Yes, Kanye was part of the crop of people who had been because the TRC investigators and the lead council are doing an amazing work. Yeah, absolutely. Like they absolutely. already they're getting into. They've the, investigated the in my mind. Who ordered it? In my the mind, process. they have investigated, mm. and they have come to a either the the conclusion or the nearest to the conclusion of yeah. how things have happened yeah. and, they want to and now they are using individuals to tell us that, tell story. Us that story but here is the thing the most important thing to have happened was was first they had used people to give us a picture of what must have happened yes and then the second piece of the puzzle which is the most vital one comes from the manjai who was with jambe himself yes who, who now tie Jambe to all this murders? Yes, he said Jambe did give, give orders. That kill them. Kill them. But this is the first kill them all during the Kill them yes. all, yes. This is the first um, suggestion that Jambe actually knew and, and gave the orders for the, for the, for the men who have been arrested or suspected, suspected of making the coup. I think we all suspected that Jambe being the person no, he is. actually knew uh, what happened. We, yes. knew, we knew he knew what happened. Yes. But Demanja is telling us that he actually ordered. Yes. So 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 it could be now Singhate, Sabali. Uh, uh, but there is a lot of significant thing here. When uh, Mr. Alaji J. Dabo was talking about his ordeal, mm -hmm. he did mention that when the firings were happening at Fajara, uh, this gentleman. Uh, Colonel Babakal Jata, yeah. uh, after the firing, when these people were being tortured, Colonel Babakal Jata had asked Senator to stop. Yes. It's okay now. Akai and Dalasai. Yes. This means, this is another layer of culpability because this means that Colonel Babakal Jata had at that time yeah. some degree of control over these people. Yeah, but I mean, no, no, but this but so is, far, all testimonies have shown that he was present at the at, 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 at least in the fire. Yeah, but if he, but that that is one yeah. layer. That is one layer. But if he could also say stop and they stop, that means he is also in charge. Or perhaps, he or, was, or perhaps he was the one who showed he was more conciliatory among the torturers. Well, I, mean, have, I mean, two, two people. Either way, you put it conciliatory or not conciliatory. It means if you can say stop and they stop, it means he was also in charge. Yeah, absolutely. The allegations have always. Link him to, to, to be among those who were uh, allegedly killing these people in, in the ranks. And then I saw the councils were, cons were trying to establish whether Mohudu Badi uh, was there. I mean, they got from an earlier testimony that he was yeah, there. He was there. But Kanye, whose testimony would have been very compelling, said he uh, wasn't. Said he wasn't. You couldn't see him. Yes. He said he could not see him. He could not see him. Remember, we are yet. See what a witness, I hear from other witness. There might be another one who may say he definitely was there. But what do you make out? Because, you know, and, and you know what? There, there are, there are, the other twist to this story is some of the people who were supposed to have been at the ranks are now as top military officers in the army right now. Yes. Yes. How can, I mean, how do you reconcile this thing? So, or the government of Mr. Barrow going to accommodate these people who are supposed to have been present when you know heinous crimes have been committed and they still walk around here. So this is this is the interesting thing. At some point, at some point, some revelations before the TRRT will make us question ourselves. It will make us cry. It yeah. will make us will make us feel we have to kill someone. So, but all in all, in my opinion, I think it's reasonable that people. Calm down, live through this until the end of the process. Yes. Then we would have had not just a picture of what had happened, but also we would have come to a conclusion and an understanding of how we can go about issues into the future. 
So, um, because you would see that in the TRRC, different people say different things. Yeah. But at least almost everybody comes with a piece of the puzzle. Exactly. At least so everyone comes with a picture. Yeah. And I think some at of least everyone gives you an understanding as to what something has happened. Yes. Let's say for instance, someone may come to you and say, X, Y, and Z was not at this murder. It, it may not be because he was not there. It may be because he did not see him. Yes. So various people who come to TRRC have various vantage points. They have various uh, positions. Yeah. And they were relying on memories which must have failed. And uh, uh, people can remember things in different ways. But for me, I, 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 some of the revelations come to actually confirm what I have always suspected from reading from uh, different contributions from who were there. Before. People like Ibu Jaro, the former uh, spokesman who fled the country, um, actually said these things. He, 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 he reported about how Koro was killed. But for me, the most interesting thing was the tiny testimony on how Koro was killed. That, that really was very telling and very moving. Yeah. Yeah, because, you know, here was a gentleman. Everybody admired Koro because of his eloquence, his familiarity, and vast knowledge in finance and economic affairs. He was very credible. He was a young man at his prime. You, know, you would not you chief Koro and you would like him instantly. And he was given honest advice. I, I was told through some testimony, Jamit took a liking for him. And, and, and what Demon guys said uh, of Edward, he, I mean he accused Edward of being jealous of uh, Mr. Um, Mr. Koro Sise. And because he said Edward never wanted anybody to be to, to, to close to Jamit closer than he, he did at the time, so he got jealous. I had similar testimonies from Iwujalo. Iwujalo, when he was rising then on the Gambia, I mean, he said this, he said, I mean, uh, I mean, Koros, he said, was so liked by the, by the council, and Jamie in particular, they used to call him Serinda. And he said, you know, Edwards was quite jealous of this man. This man. And then yeah, but another side to read. But what I, what I could understand was, that guy said, Jamie was speaking to Edward, at the air, I had the foot of the aircraft before they took off, and it was soon after that that this man was killed. Yes, could Jamie have known or took part in the plot? For me, that's the suspicion now. Now, th this is this is a contradiction, a huge one, because then when I said two things one, he said it was unusual for Jamie to do that. Yes, he said unusual yes. for Jamie to do that. Yes. Why would he do a thing that unusual then? And this gentleman was not taken home. He was not allowed to even go home. He was driven from the airport yeah. right down to his, right down to his death, the place where he was going to be killed. So I mean, you could see that eventually there is some degree of reasonable suspicion to suggest that Jambe must have known and ordered Koro's execution. So you have to take. Edward Singata to appear before the TRC yeah. for us because, to know what yeah, Jambi actually told him on that. Uh, yes, whether they actually talk about that incident. But it could also be Jambi said, don't do any funny things until I come. And in, in his absence. But then that means, means then that, that if he said then don't do any funny thing in connection to Koros, then, yeah. then that means he knew something was about to happen. And if he knew something was about to happen, as the leader, he had the responsibility to stop it. And now, that means he and, is, and perhaps more importantly, if he didn't know anything before the plane took off, he suddenly did. After the murder, what did he do after that? After that, Demba Nja, in fact, made it a point to say that Demba did not, Jambe did not speak to him after Koro's death about oh, yes. Koro's death. And, and this is a state minister yes. whom Demba introduced to Jambe. Yes. Demba said he, Demba, he, yes, Jambe got to know Koro because of Demba. Yes. So naturally, you would tell, assume that he would speak to him about it. That this had happened, we are investigating, blah, 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 blah. Nobody some assurances. I, mean, I remember it was a daily observer, sorry, Boya, to, to, be, to, be ex, to be exact, was the first reporter who got to the bond out massively on the Jambu Road and he took a picture of the charred body of the, of the minister, you know, mangled with pieces of metal from the, from the, from the, from the metal, you know, from the massive spent there. And when it was published, you know, the government came with a statement, yeah, it's very, it's very serious, the government is called sound, they're going to investigate. Everybody knew, and nobody believed him, that the man didn't drive him. He was too intelligent to do that. 
So everybody knew he was killed. He was killed. And later we had this, you know, this this kind of theories that Kanye actually confirmed. You know, Kanye put the puzzles into the various uh, into the various holes where they fit. Yeah. But there has always been suspicion that this man was killed. And and at Yankuba, allegedly at Yankuba's house. Mm -hmm. He would never explain this um, when he was in in his few months when he went uh, into exile. So the theory actually is, 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 is certainly going to shake this nation in many ways. Um, yeah. This November 11, I don't know how much more they'd have to go. November uh, 11? November 11. Maybe they have closed the chapter, I'm not too sure. No, Sana may likely testify. Yeah, they, we don't know what they have. Well, Sana, Sana could be crucial, Edward could be crucial, Yanko Batura is, is in the country. Um, you know, and and and, maybe and Yankuba could also could also come. I do know that Yankuba had been sapped. We yes. all know yes. has been sapped to appear. So we we will um, we will definitely. And I think it's in his interest that he appears. Uh, we will brace ourselves then for more, for more and more, maybe more and more startling revelations from the November 11th. November, and then they, you know, actually the, the last session actually jumped to 1995. That is. Uh, Koro's death. Yeah. But then there are incidents like uh, January 25th, 1995, when Sabali himself and Hydra were arrested. You know, Hydra died subsequently. If the TRS is going to look into that, then then, then there is going to be uh, January, from November. There will so be when Yankuba appears, he will likely talk about that because they take advantage of uh, the witness appearance to, 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 uh, to, to right. get to speak to as get. many issues as they can yes. within the time frame. Exactly. So that uh, when, when you, when you, incidents that are linked to the man. Yeah, that is why Demba had spoken about these two issues, yeah. but he was not allowed to talk about 2000 yeah. student killer. Yes. And then, and he knew, yeah. you know, he, he was the one with Jambe in Havana when it happened, and he was going to say something yes. and, and, and about Bamo, what Jambe said on the phone. Bamo will disconnected with the 2000 uh, student shooting as well. So, so it's becoming interesting and interesting and... Yeah, quite. Well, these are, of course, allegations that are coming from the TRC. Well, some people actually conclude that these are facts. Absolutely. I mean, even to, if we, you cannot help. I mean, the, the theories are so compelling that you yeah. you cannot you cannot help. That you have to take them as the Bible or the Quran. Yeah. But that's the TRC. Uh, we move now. Before you move, um, I just wanted to ask, because there was a suggestion um, I read through on social media that said that it would have been nice if the TRC handled some of such fragile information internally that is indoor uh, other than broadcasting it and um, also escalating the way people would feel about a certain individual that have uh, injured or hurt a family member of theirs. What do you make of that? I don't think that would have made sense. You know, in fact, I, I think even the TRS are now regretting why initially they suggested that they're going to have these testimonies, you know, recordings delayed, kept indoor and edit and then, you know, broadcast them later. You know, that was the in initial yeah. case. Mm -hmm. They knew that wouldn't have made any impact. Yeah. I mean, in the way, the kind of world we live in now, you you simply cannot do that. Mm -hmm. I mean, the TRS is making, it's been effective and getting people to move because it has been a lot transparently live. Mm -hmm. I mean, it wouldn't have served the interest of the commission or even their reputation. Uh, you know, to handle this in time and come out and say this, uh, this and this is what has been said. People will say when and how. Yeah. And so this is the only. And people people have will say this is not even true. Yeah. It's, they are it's not true. You cook this up. Remember, the people who are saying that they were contacting and trying to buy bribe witnesses to come in. So they themselves realized that it was going to be a terrible mistake if they were going to hold these things, delay all the broadcasts, and edit them out and, and send them. And out. also, also, also I think the TRRC deserves a part and the back. Because what they are doing is incredibly difficult than what we see. Because when you are trying to get a witness to come and admit to murder or torture, it's not easy. Witnesses don't come because they want to come. No. That's what we see. Witnesses come because they are presented with something compelling that convinced them that they know I was involved. And then they come to testify with the hope that they could be granted amnesty. Wow. There are a lot of people who come, of other than those who are victims. 
But those who are perpetrators don't just come to TRC like that. They come. They must have. They, you are suggesting they must have been presented with some degree of evidence. Yes, okay, some I, degree okay, of okay, evidence. Okay, involvement. Yes. And they say, well, they, yes. Not what yes. So these problem. people are doing an incredible job. And if you look at it, this is a country where we don't have CCTV stock no, elsewhere. So they don't. Barrow and his team don't go to uh, a place where they when just extract the CCTV and investigate. confirm that, yes, I mean, a large barrow. Not President Barrow. No, no, no. no. <laughs> okay, then, let's move on. So, so it's incredibly difficult to get to a point where you could convince someone. But now that they've got Alaji Kanye, you see, they get one person at a time. time. Now that they get Alaji Kanye, who and, we know, and we know and, and confirm, will be involved yeah. in this. And what the testimony is, do people like Yanko for example... Would compel orders? Yes, would, would, would be compel to tell the truth, because they know already a lot of things have been said. I mean, the Kanye was saying that when the late council put it to him that if, if Yanko should appear tomorrow and said he wasn't there, what would he say? He would be lying. So Yanko and others who might be coming later would have to think twice about they can lie or cook, cook, cook up any stories. Yes, yes. But that is, that is the conversation. Now we, we're moving on to... The split over yes, the land circuit. Um, now, does he or he do, doesn't he have the powers to uh, sack a nominated member of parliament, President Yama? We have a president, but we have had a lot of juries now. But what do we take and what do we leave? Even lawyers have joined the fray and that didn't convince anybody <laughs> whether he's right or wrong. I mean, the lawyer said, they believe it's an interference in the work of the legislature. But the Gambia Bar Association. Yes, but then other lawyers are saying that once he could nominate, he can fire. Once he could hire, he can fire. I mean, some say the Constitution is uh, not quite clear about whether it's, it's nominated. Silent, yeah, okay. silent whether it's nominated or member of parliament. So we're going to do. But what was apparently clear that uh, President Barrow targeted UDP Nast nominated member, and it tells you the biggest story that President Barrow and the UDP are still uh, antagonizing each other, and, mm. and, and there is going to be a showdown one way or the other. Mm. That's what it tells you. But then it tells you, of course, there is a lot of division, even among mm. parliamentarians mm. and UDP ones included, on issues like this. So mm. if tomorrow somebody come up with a motion to impeach the president, you can expect and, and what I learned there is that um, even people you normally think that would have opposed anything uh, Barrow is associated with are supporting this cause. Like the GDC National Assembly members, what are we seeing? Yeah, but you are seeing a, di a change in the dynamics of Gambian politics but now. So is it true so that the GDC now have suffered their stance against um, Barrow? Well, it's been some it's been a long time now. I've not had their <laughs> ceaseless and unending press and condemnations. You're, you're, you're they seem to be on holiday, is it? So or something's cooking? Well, not necessarily on holiday, but uh, they would say the enemy of your enemy is your friend, I think. Ah, so because uh, there is a spot now between Barrow and UDP, they are happy with that. They'll take it soft with Barrow. Yeah, yeah. So if the dynamics of our politics is changing, and people who are being in power are now turning to becoming an opposition, mm. then people who are in opposition will naturally. So it's like a wheel moving. Ah, okay. You know? So it, when the conveyor belt moves, every other thing that's on south perhaps will go to north, mm. and those that are north will go to south. Yeah, but so, so naturally, that's how I see it. But the event has been politicized. I was in the National Assembly three occasions on the first day when Kumba reported. And even on another day. So, and I, I know, and I've spoken to people on both sides of the divide. So, I know it's highly politicized. Uh, the, the discussion had gone beyond the rational uh, mind. It's gone beyond what is constitutional, what is not constitutional. It's been incredibly politicized. And that is, what, that is why it's... Uh, it's uh, so, the, the question is... It's not whether, uh, it's not, for me it's very essential that this happened because it gives us an opportunity to understand now what sort of a constitution, it adds to the debate of what sort of constitution do we need, um, what sort of nomination should we have, nominated members should we have, okay. what should this nominated member, what power should they have, how should they be hired, and how should they be fired. We could define this in the law. 
So you I mean, that's the lesson we learn from this one. Yeah, that's the lesson but, but we learn. Shall we but continue then? What, what the, I mean, there are suggestions that the only way now, the only course upon now for everybody now is, is to, to get, go to the Supreme Court. Yes, get Jaita to go to the Supreme Court and let there be an invitation so that we don't have President Barrow or any other president sacking the National Assembly. I remain convinced that it's, it's unconstitutional. Mm. I agree with the bar. Because here is the thing. Of course, the, the, it is stated how they should be nominated. But when they are nominated, they become effectively lawmakers. Mm -hmm. They have all the privileges and rights of lawmakers. They have constituency allowance. Mm -hmm. They have the same voting right. Mm -hmm. They have everything that a lawmaker has. No now, how could a president fire a substantive member of the National Assembly? Was, but the person is nominated. Nominated, but the person who become a National Assembly member. A substantive member of the National Assembly. So, and they are not public servants. Yeah. So, so there are those who ask to call, I don't know, section 2-3, uh, 3-1, section uh, 2-31, to say that uh, because they are public officials and when the president can hire, he can fire. When the mm -hmm. president can create an office, he can dissolve an office. So uh, that's the thing, but they are not public officials as well. So, I mean, after hearing from lawyers, counter position from lawyers, commentators, so we are still not the wiser. I think the issue is we, we go to Supreme Court Supreme for conclusion and interpretation. interpretation. And this is this is highly important. Yes. Very absolutely. important. It's going to set a legal precedent. Right? Absolutely. Whenever yeah, whatever the yeah. outcome. Absolutely. Now, finally, um, a little bit about the deportations before we go to the Senegalese election. election. Um, we had the EU, we had stories from Germany who said Gambians for fear of deportation are now sleeping in the streets because they don't want to be deported. And many people are with the notion that uh, there has been a, an agreement between the EU and the Gambia to deport the people. The government has denied. It's, it keeps rolling and rolling. Um, and then the, the debate is. But come on, who do you blame if there is any uh, for these deportations? Um, the youths or the Gambians who left and settled illegally? Um, in a foreign land, exhausted all his or her legal remedies to stay, and is now being sent back. The truth is that who do you blame? The government? The truth is or that the, the migrants. The truth is that is the Gambia government that is making a mistake. Mm -hmm. The reality is, if you are dealing with a problem, there is a reasonable, responsible government comes out and talk to your citizens about the problems you are facing. Mm -hmm. If Europeans are telling you we want to deport your people, mm -hmm. go to your people and tell them, hey, Germany wants to deport your people. Mm -hmm. And this and this and this and this is what we are talking to them about. Mm -hmm. Let them know that this is not within your control. Mm -hmm. Make them understand that. If it's not within your control, tell them this is not within my control. I cannot do anything about it. The solution is not silence. And to say that they have not, they have not agreed anything, it's a lie. What did they agree? Look, the Gambia government since 2017 had been discussed with the European Union what they call the so-called good practice document. Yeah. And we all see this document. I saw this document. I read it from the first page to the last page. Now, and what they are discussing, yes. what they are discussing, is re repatriation, deportation, and reintegration of Gambian nationals. Okay. Now, so you cannot, government cannot continue to be lying to the people. Now listen. What do they agree to accept your citizens back when they have exhausted? What they but now listen, when they have exhausted all their legal remedies to stay there to, to sign and accept them back, or the thing is, are you going to or to sign that yes they can be deported? Which one? Which one is which? The thing is, Europe, Europe, be, European, be, anyway. no, no, European, no, no, European. The thing is, European Union, European countries have a number of Gambians, thousands of Gambians who have exhausted their, yes, their, their uh, asylum procedure. Yeah. They cannot be allowed to stay in, in Europe, yeah. European countries. Yeah. Now, this is what European Commission, European Union is telling the Gambian government that here are your people here in our country who have exhausted all their legal uh, challenges. Mm. They cannot stay in this country. We want to return them. Mm. So the good practice document, mm. by be, be, the name itself is, sub, is yes. self explanatory That's the name. That's the, way, the best way to do it. The, yes. The go good, yes. Tells them.
how do we do this? Mm. Now, Gambia government's position was that we need, we can only take deportation of Europe. Europe's position was that we want to deport 50 mm. at, a time. at a time, 50 every month. Mm. Now, the discussion, as far as I know, mm. was that they reached was that you cannot deport 50 at a time. We don't have the reception capacity. Mm. But the agreement, I think, at the latter part was 50 mm. a month. So to go and tell people that there is no agreement to accept these people is a lie. No, now what the Gambia government should do, uh -huh. what the Gambia government should is to come out to the Gambian people and tell them that your, our citizens are in European countries. They are not allowed to stay there. And, and the reasonable thing for us to do, we cannot allow them to be dumped on the streets. What we can do and need to do is to bring them home. So you now, understand? You know, that negotiate with the European Union on how to go about this. I think the, the, the you understand, the but not to not confusion is this. I agree that the government is not effectively communicating to the people everything. About it's not even effectively. They are not. They are not even communicating. Yes. And they are shy of the matter. They just keep. Uh, they are afraid of this. No, but they are the lying also about it. Okay, now no, but I think the the, 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 the the crux of the matter is people need to understand what has been agreed. And from this good practice document, what has been agreed is not whether Gambians will be deported and the government will say yes, deport them. No, 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 no. That they are going to be deported. They are going to be that, deported. That's out of the Go and tell the people. people. That's out of the control of the government. Yes, that's out of the control of so the government. So then, then the whole agreement or lack of agreement that the people are blaming the government of signing and the government is denying not signing is not so much as to whether to agree their citizens to be deported, it is so much as how many of them can come at a time. Yes. That's what is the debate. Yeah, but but, but remember, people are thinking remember, that, many people are thinking that the whole idea of deporting is going to be deporting people. The government, like government is not deporting people. But the point that's, is, that's the no, confusion no, 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 but the point is, who do you blame for that? Do you blame the people or the government? For not communicating no, This is a government, not no. for lying to the people. This is a government that has spokesperson of the government. Yes. Minister, it has a minister, minister, for minister for communication. It has and foreign minister. And even the foreign minister has media office. Media communication. Now the press office of the president has the five journalists the working EU, there. The ambassadors of the EU have all now every all every out. information that we are accessing yeah. on deportation yeah. comes from EU. EU. Not EU from Gambia. The EU representative. I mean the I mean, government is shy. Uh, or afraid of planning the topic, but not afraid, afraid of making people understand uh, what is happening. Yeah, because they all I mean, they are like either they that's are, the textbook definition yeah, of incompetence. EO they actually know the fact, but they are shy of coming to the public. I mean, everybody knows that it is not the government, government has very little control or choice as to where it is. Citizens, any citizens should be deported from Europe. Yeah, no, not, no, here, no, is, no, here is another point. No, 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 here is another point. I think we've been quite uh, benevolent to government on this one. The point is, Gambia is on a transition. Whether one takes that or not, Gambia is on a transition. This country is not as it is supposed in the Europe within the safe, safe countries. You understand? Now, yes. this is, Gambia is now assumed to be among the safe countries to return people. Yeah. So is Senegal and others. But Gambia is not. Gambia is recovering from decades of economic collapse. So, so now, 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 the problem the problem is, it is for Gambia government. I am not saying, when people, when, when Europe says they cannot stay in our country, no one can force them. Absolutely. Not. But you can make a case. This is, European Union has given millions of dollars for Gambia. Remember that Gambia is the biggest youth empowerment program right now. It's European sponsor. Yes. It's the, 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 the youth empowerment million. project. Yeah. yeah. 11 11 million million. Yes. So this is an institution that's investing a lot in young people in the country because they want you to be able to take care of those who will return. Yeah. Now you can sell an idea to them. This they may not take. But let your people know that this is what we are doing. Send this idea to these people. In fact, Salah made a case about this in the National Assembly. When Dabo appeared on this particular issue, yeah. he told them that, look, can't we, can't we sell an idea to our European partners to tell them, look, buy us some time. We are in a transition. When you dump our citizens on us as at this point, it can cause chaos. Now, train these people for us. 
on various skill set areas, mm. then by the time we know you cannot take them, mm. say in a year time, mm. after they are trained on various things, mm. we can accept them. They but at that time, we would also have prepared for their reception. You, you think your opinion will leave? But of course, how would you not? How would you know they will listen if you don't try? Okay. And how would you? How would you? How would people know you are doing this if you don't tell? Somebody can argue that uh, if if somebody is not supposed to stay in my country for one day longer than uh, he's allowed to do, why would I take him to train him? Is the European Union forced to give us money? No. But because they want to help us, they want to help us through this period. That is why they give us money. If they can give us millions of dollars, they can certainly listen to our concerns. But they the people to be trained here. Yeah. That is what I am saying. Now, now I did a story on this. And I am in position to tell you what this YEP project is. Yeah. YEP cannot train more than 10,000 people, yeah, we know. more than 10,000 people and employ them. Now, what's the population of young people in this country? Now, we know that. It's 60%. Let's, it's let's over 400,000 people. Let's not deviate. The issue is who is to blame for the deportation of Gambians from Europe back to their country? I we we I'm not we are not. If you answer that, <laughs> you want to just say it's no, not the government is the European Union. Union. Say, European but, Union is one. The European Union. I mean, they are given asylum to Kirby Frank, tens of thousands of Gambians. Yes. They said they cannot take any more. They have analyzed them individually. Yes. They have they have discovered that they don't have a case. Yeah. And they cannot be left there. Mm. They must come back. Yes. And what is the government's role here? To say no, we are not. No, we I'm have saying government. In, a go no, Mr. Chan. No, Mr. Chan. No, Gambia government is already negotiating how this should be done. Exactly. So I am saying this is part of the things you should put in how yes. it should be done. Exactly. So no, nobody is talking. Government is not explaining their case, and everybody is saying they they have they are the one who signed the deportation, and they have said no, we have not signed the deportation. So they are now. They contribute to their lack of their silence. The deportation is going to happen anyway. The European Union wants it to happen. Exactly. They could be, so they could bring the government government has to agree for it to happen. So I am saying the government has to have a way, a reasonable way of agreeing with this. That's what I am that's, saying. That's, that's what they're doing now. So and effectively plan this. They're not doing that. Okay. So now, what is on the table about this deportation is this. Yes, the European Union will always bring back the tens of thousands of Gambians who have exhausted all legal means to stay there, but they have agreed with the Gambia government to bring them in dozens, instead of plane loads every other time. But they will always come back. I suspect the now the agreement must have been 15 pounds. 15 pounds. Because months. that's what we've been seeing. So that will take, uh, maybe before before other stone, before the other stone come, they would have spent two years in the process. They might get married or get or legalized, or, or I mean, regularized their step, whatever. But this is a menace that the government, I agree, should tackle with more effective communication, etc. Now we move on to Senegal. Um, President Macky Sall um, has been elected now, officially now, with 58%. But, but what's was Kosin brother? Ah, uh, you are the one who 57%. Said it. I, I, think, I think they don't know his order until, until, until 2016. But what it tells us, there's a lot of uproar um, in the run-up to the elections. For me, I think that um, the rejection of the election results by the opposition expected. I, I think their grievance is much larger and older than just the election results. You know, from the ongoing, they said the whole process is flawed because people have been disqualified. So that, 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 it was that a concept, decision. Yes, that concept is when, when they, in the world in which they went into the elections. They've always said it was not going to be fair anyway. Karim but and they, and took and part, and, and, and they took part, they took part in Hoping that they will force the incumbents to a second round, and you know what the history is: when you go to the second seven. round, you are vulnerable as the incumbent. I mean, they come together and uh, defeat you. It didn't happen. Mm. Independent, in my analysis, from listening to the results of the uh, coming from GFM, uh, from DSTV, from RTS, in many areas, I can confirm yes on the results that Maki was leading in many areas. What I probably cannot conclude is whether that was enough to prevent a second round, to secure an outright 51 plus, now 58, so I cannot be sure of that, because I, but he was leading in many areas. Do you believe, from what you have gathered, that he could have made 58%? Of course. Yeah. 
for me, we all believe Mackie was going to win. Yes. In fact, why, why was what, the, the the argument was that that all the all the potential so-called challengers of Maki were prevented from standing for the election. Okay. Why did we believe that in the first place? We believe that because we believe those are the people who could stop it. So the opposition are right in some way that the election was not fair from the word go. Well, if, you if, wouldn't if, say it was not fair. I, I, mean, I mean, when potential threats were eliminated, yeah, we were using when, we, when we all know, Karim and also Khalifa Salah are not as innocent as others yeah. want to make them appear. Well, is he not using criminal justice to eliminate uh, yeah. people? From and we should population. like to think that the Senegalese criminal justice system is independent. And we should like to also uh, uh, think uh, that the Supreme Court is independent. Is it not because of lack of independence that the opposition said they are not going to challenge it anyway? Because they think Maki and the courts are the same. That's what they say. Well, if that's what they say, then that's it. But, I mean, we know Maki. Look at what is happening in Nigeria. Buhari well, and the Atiku guy is saying it. All the international institutions that observe these two elections have said this election is free and fair. Mendy Guy is the one who won. Now, I, I was well, listening to the various radios, televisions, and media outlets from Senegal. I think they suffered from one problem. I mean, you may call this transparency, yes. But unlike our system, like in our system, uh, the APRC, the GDC, the coalition, and everybody knew the results. Mm -hmm. The agents know it, election observers, even ordinary people know the results in their polling books. Mm -hmm. and, and, and of course later in their constituencies. They all know that. The, the, the journalists know it. Mm -hmm. The observers know it. But nobody announced this. Nobody is allowed to announce this. Yes. Only the IEC is allowed to announce this. Yes. Now, in my thinking, if the Senegalists had taken this system, probably the confusion would not have generated. Would not have generated. But the oppositions were the first to hasten to say second round is inevitable. I understand, but that's because the law is very liberal on people announcing results, the results. and pundits analyzing. Because this is what happened. I mean, if you tune on DSTV, you have that Maki is leading in Tuba, he is leading in Kasmas, he is leading in Kaulak, he is leading in Fatika, he is leading in Podor. All right? And, and that's just a small, let's say, just, just, just a drop on the ozone of the results that are, that are coming. I mean, you yeah. get the impression, no, 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 nobody can beat Maki. If you listen to TFM, you meant that they are dealing with the results, you know, where, I uh, have to call it, where Sal or, 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 or Marike Nyan is leading. You think that, well, no, Marike is absolutely is going to... Lead. So the confusion, people get confused because there are many theories at different times they are taking... Well, the electoral commission that is not confused said Maki is also one. Which, which, is, which, which they don't want to believe now. Well, because they have only grown been polluted with the partial results and analysis and opinions they have been receiving from the various media. I think it makes sense when announcements are centralized, such as our system here. Mm -hmm. Don't you think so? Mm -hmm. huh? Yeah, I do. Anyway. Thank you very much, Mr. Lamincham. That was quite insightful. Uh, he took us through the TRRC split in the parliament and Senegalese election, just to mention a few. Now over to you, Mr. K. Dabo. What do you have on the Ker social media, what's trending on social media and as well on Kerfatu website? So uh, on the social media, the most heated one is the uh, call for TRRC to fully apply um into force um, uh, the punishment against anyone who interferes with witnesses as it's stated in the act um we were told by mr Olaji Kani, the commission's 24th witness i think yes um who told us that uh, yakuba ture had called him to ask him not to go to the commission because apparently uh, he but not to tell them anything i think yes. that's what not to tell, tell the commission anything, anything. Yes. uh we have and this not to be bothered yes we have bothered. we are they the leaders we are the leaders and we have this in control yes. so they, i they will not do anything we are the leaders leaders of what i don't know okay. um so um and also he said uh, later he also Called, received a call from Fatima to Jahun Pasise, uh, who also repeated the same thing. Um, uh, Araji was angry with this. Um, uh, this is one of the best opportunities he has to apply for amnesty. And, 
um, he and he has basically nothing to lose. Exactly. So you know he came. Uh, yeah, I testify. I, and what do you think? You think it's reasonable that people are asking for them to be arrested? Yeah, because according to the act, when you interfere with uh, what what can, what can potentially be evidence uh, and witnesses, you are liable to them. Uh, but I couldn't. I could see from the lead counsel that he settled for a warning. Uh, you know, a, a warning. Uh, but from what he said, he didn't. He didn't suggest that there is going to be action against them or they will be called. Um, he just said that people must be warned that any attempt to interfere with witness is against the law. Uh, so I do not see any outright and immediate willingness on the part of the commission to deal with these people according to law, from what I've gathered from his conclusions. Maybe they have something else uh, in the background, we don't know. But I think it's wrong. Uh, if, if Fatimata or Yanubu had done that, if they actually said what they are supposed to, have, what they are said to have said by the witness, then I'm afraid they are wrong in, in that. But you can also see, uh, and that's what people are trying to draw. What interest does Fatimata has in common with Yankuba? Um, by co you know, by trying to coerce this man to uh, either take the TRC, which is sort of pinch, or to avoid saying what he has said. There. I think it must have because they were both in the government. Or perhaps a personal relation. Or personal relation. Some have suggested personal relation, but uh, private relation. <laughs> but what we can say. <laughs> you are not suggesting that, are you? <laughs> I am not suggesting. People are everything on it. You, but you say I, that by looking away from the camera. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, what is important, and from what we have gathered, that it looks like this is a warning from the council, which are getting very serious now as the evidence are getting a little bit more critical, that they need to be tough. I mean, his learning last subsequent it was very fun that anybody who tried to interfere with the witness to the audience will be dead with according to So, but let's connect this to, to what the challenges that we are about to face or the challenges that are yet to come. Think about it. Um, Yankuba, we believe, did what he did because of the, the, the potentials of him being implicated by yeah, by Kanye. Mm -hmm. This is going to, we may likely see more of this. Absolutely, the journalists are here and uh, and some may even be violent, yeah. right? I mean, like what, what you mean? said is that the, the, the journalists or the, or the suspected, uh, uh, I mean, the suspects in these atrocities who are at, who will be willingly called to come to the commission, like you said uh, correctly, have nothing to lose. Yes. Because they believe, even the journalists who, who have been captured, I mean, they believe that in this country now, nobody will kill anybody. Uh, at least, we, we thank God that we have a system where nobody will kill anybody. Just, yeah, but people just, who, just, who, by, just by word of mouth, as it used to happen on the government. But people who are in position of power and seem to be implicated in these atrocities, could they have enough motivation to move beyond what you have already what that to is move beyond rhetoric to action. That's what the commission believes. That's why they are so in fact in fact from what With I less have protection. From what, from what I have on a, a, a how to call it a, a Kali was put under protection in the days leading up to his testimony, especially when he he did not come that that question uh, the, 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 the revelation of Yankuba and Fatima uh, calling him and I'm, I'm sure was not new. He must have told it. Yes, commission. Yeah, he must have told the commission. Absolutely. And the commission acted to protect Oh, they, they do pre-hearing preparation. They do pre-hearing. I'm yeah. quite sure he brought that because commission, he was told the commission. And that's why the commission had to put this man under some protection and pledge to continue to support him. Now, they felt it could be dangerous. People like Yakubo called and tell him, not, don't tell them anything. I mean, you know, they are concerned that if, 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 if people like Yakubo or somebody who's more extreme than Yankuba knows that this one is going to tell him anyway, he might eliminate him. So that's why he comes on this, um, you know, very perhaps, perhaps this is good too, isn't it? I mean, for the commission, its, it's staff, who are in key person like lead investigators or, or the commission head itself, or maybe the lead counsel, to be better prepared in well, terms of facing the challenges that they well, they have, been, they have been warned and have been advised from similar, I remember a Ghanaian uh, woman who was part of this today said, you know, they must not rest, they must not uh, uh, get themselves, uh, you know, to be caught off guard. They must 
always anticipate that there can be somebody somewhere who don't like what is going on and may choose options, other options to deal with them. So I'm sure they are very aware of their security, their personal security and, 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 and safety as they go about it. It's, it's, a, it's a quite a tedious job and could be hard at us. But we hope and pray that the spirit with which it started, uh, and, I, and I'm sure the council was right in, 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 in putting that across, that, uh, I mean, if things go like that, let nobody take the law into your own hands. Even if you hear something that's very bad, just calm until after all the investigations. And I'm sure they'll come out with policies that will make people report Um So it's, 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 it's the, the council, uh, the commission is definitely working very hard. Uh, this is one commission you, you can say really, really, really are, are right on the right track. And not to say that what is not. CRC. Uh, well, the CRC is, will be a little bit controversial. <laughs> and I'm sure we are coming to yes, expect a, a showdown in that one, in the completion of that. You will see a lot of conflict of interest. Oh, seriously? Yeah, you will. Well, I'm from the commander in chief. Ah, well, yeah, yeah, you'll see. But then you can... You can Who is it. your friend anyway? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> so, um, yeah. Um, and also, um, one important thing I think we should talk about uh, was on Wednesday I was... I was at um, I was the National Assembly at uh, Kumba, mm -hmm. who we've just talked about, had been asked by the deputy clerk, I have learned, um, that she couldn't chair uh, the meeting of the National Assembly Committee on the regional on integration. Trade and regional integration. Now we move into Kefa. Mm -hmm. Um So, it was, well, there was no fight, and then apparently uh, some UDP guys have avoided talking to me about it. Mm -hmm. The minority, the majority leader wouldn't comment on it, um, even though he claimed he didn't know what I know he knew. Um, the clerk of the assembly wouldn't talk about it either. It was interesting, wasn't it? I mean, at least we now know that... So it's effectively... Uh, uh, President Barrow's uh, removal of him is coming to effect or has been respected? Yes. If she's allowed, if she, if she's I think it's being respected it. pending any attempt by. But there were, calls, there were calls for her to ignore the letter and continue to work. If she's now been removed from, uh, from the, by the authorities at the parliament, um, they are telling us that they, um, they go by what the president said. They're not willing for any. Supreme Court or anyone's interpretation. They're going by what the president says. So, yeah. so I think the reasonable thing is that the president has succeeded now in removing the National Assembly member. Yes, right I, I, it. I think so. Because so I think I think the reasonable thing for Kumba to do is to honor the the commander in chief on this uh, while uh, the see how it yeah the outcome of the Supreme Court or which could take a bit of a time. But I, I suppose also while that is happening, probably the president should be restrained in some ways not to appoint another person. Ah, it's good. Well, you see, that's it. That's if, 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 if the authorities of the National Assembly are now implementing the president's directives in, in preventing this woman from taking a seat there, then that was there. They're now ready for him to go and, 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 and nominate another person. The question is, does the clerk have the authority? To ask a nominated nas a national assembly member. Well, he, 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 he is part of the clerk is powerful. He's, the he's, clerk is the administrator. Yes, the administrator. Yes, he can he can implement the directives that he receives from the speaker. I mean, nobody knows. It could be even the speaker. Uh, you know, is, is is not willing to oppose or publicly oppose the president's position on this matter. He may not like it, but he may not be ready to publicly uh, oppose it. Uh, you know, as who do you think is the gentleman's uh, oh, the lady's potential successor? Sedinjai or Pam Alex is it? You are talking about uh, quite controversial. No, Pam Alex not quite controversial, but uh, Sedinjai. Sedinjai is, the church will be very controversial. Uh, it would create a lot of noise. Well, I met both I of them the in the National Assembly on Wednesday. Perhaps that's Well, they, they've been, they've been, they've been, they've been, they could have they been, they could have been going there uh, occasions previously. Well, yeah. uh, the church of Sedinjai would be controversial. It will. Who do you think would replace Ma Malik? Malik. Uh, then think out of my suggestion. If, if he is, Malik would Malik would have been more acceptable. 
Mm. His choice of marriage was more palatable to people than Fahad. But people who don't like anything to do with the APR, they wouldn't like any of those. Any so, of because they're likely, don't you think, which, which political party do you think is likely going to have this nominated? Uh, NRP. NRP, perhaps. How about Musa Songko then? Who's Musa Songko? Musa Songko, the deputy, national, deputy uh, leader of NRP. I don't even know him. Could you believe but, it's a, it's a But then again, office. then again, you don't think Barrow would run hard because someone from his own BYM. Yes, then, that's then, that is where I was going. Could, then, could then, he not? Then, yeah, could he not pick somebody from the national? Who do you think would it be? Would be? Ah, uh, maybe it could be the president, the secretary general, uh, the, uh, the president, uh, secretary LMP, general, the Ansu. Yes, Ansu. Yes. Uh, Ansu. Uh, Ansu Singhate. I think it's going to look from, from, from that. But then, what we don't discuss is, what was the crime of the Honorable Kumbajet? Yeah, Kumbajet. I have not known any. The president did not, the letter did not state it. No, the letter didn't even state why. Just said, um, I'm here by uh, re reacting on an executive directive and revoking your nomination. Now, he has supporters and supporters of UD, because he's been targeted because he addressed a rally of the UDP where she didn't speak kindly of President Barrow's ambition or alleged betrayal of UDP, etc. Et mm. Could that be any reason? Perhaps. Perhaps. But also there are many, there are, for me there are two major things. One, we've talked about this many, many times. We've talked about Barrow and UDP many times. Of course, um, it's moving uh, from one phase to another. Yeah. But uh, for me the most significant things are two. One, Baro appointed Kumba to serve as his person in the National Assembly. Yeah. And now there is an apparent split between UDP and Baro. Yeah. Baro likes to be, Kum, would like Kumba to be her Kumba, yeah. not UDP's Kumba. Oh. And you know now that since the last Congress of the United Democratic Party, Kumba has been appointed as the deputy, as the woman. Uh, the, the president of the women, female wing of the UDP. Of the UDP. That makes Kumba someone with a seat at the executive level. Okay. Yes, of the UDP. Yes. Now, but naturally, effectively, mm. Baro has lost Kumba to UDP. Yes. And you have Kumba also now becoming effectively a partisan political player, mm. key in UDP. So, 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 Barrow knew that she was always UDP. It, yes, she was also was, always UDP. So now, but then again, Barrow's agenda uh -huh. and now are different. Now, who is conflicting? Whose agenda is conflicting with? But Barrow was not. Barrow is now, Barrow That's is right. creating his own. So now, that's what I'm saying now. When he was nominating them, he knew they were NRP, they were UDP, they were, I don't know where they were, where the orders come from. He knew they were. Now, if today is he, you know, he's no longer. He's no longer happy with their status. Who's changing? But that was a very innocent. Who, who, that was a who very is changing now. That was a well. I don't know who is changing, <laughs> but I would say who. Barrow was is changing. Barrow was a very innocent president at that time. Now, listen, he had no ambition. Now listen now. And he didn't plan ahead for this kind of a, a scenario. Okay. So I think if so he's, he's it's only changing. reasonable that if he is turning around, he is one thing. Yes. yes. So it's only reasonable that he makes this necessary. So it's, all, it's clear that he targeted UDP people. I remember Tal was executive member yeah. of UDP. Now combat, combat director, executive member. So but another side of the story is targeting could, UDP people because he didn't agree with yeah, them. Yeah. And another thing could be he's targeting UDP people because these two, these two ladies and. Uh, uh, a soft spot, these two people. But could, could, you, could the same thing be said of Yusuf Ajayt, Yusuf Acham, who is uh, yeah. uh, executive member, uh, who is regional um, chairman for West Coast. He was sacked from being presidential advisor. Yeah. So three perhaps, he's, perhaps he may be pressuring the old man into. So now, if you are trying to eliminate UDP from influence in the government, who better to start with it? Is it not the old man? Dabo. Dabo. Yeah. Why is Barrow sparing Dabo? Oh, is he too afraid of jittery to, to, to rock the boat or perhaps the impact of that will really... The impact is of that, this is not a good time. Remember that this so country, perhaps, this country is so going are to... These, are these not provocations enough to get Dabo to stand down himself by himself? That's what I'm saying. I think this, this is what Barrow's goal is. Yeah. A provocation to get Dabo to leave. Yeah. But another thing that he's not thinking 
perhaps mm -hmm. is, is it's that it's a very turbulent year mm -hmm. and there are others who are in both in and outside of the coalition talking about the three years yes, yes. now the reasonable thing for baro to do is to keep his people close mm -hmm. until after his three years to keep them close together yes he's Partners. But but then, but these actions are sacking people are not helping that. Well, I don't know how he intends to hold on to this. Otherwise, it could be very chaotic. Um, so, but how he deals with that, I'm sure probably he's also thinking, um, uh, and uh, oh, maybe he will come up with also his own solution. Yes. It's it's, it's being an exciting. Uh, yeah, and, and there are interesting even, times. Intriguing if you like times ahead. Yeah. Thank you very much, Mustafa Akeda, for quite an insightful one on the Kitfat website. And also thank you for stepping in for Nimasata for the social media, uh, what's trending on social media. Now to one of my favorite segments of the show, which is the entrepreneur. Of course, you know that every um, episode of the show, we always profile um, an entrepreneur on the program who has set up a business for economic growth and employment creation. In this edition, we meet a Gambian by name Adia Tukonte and Zainab, uh, who are doing a unique and creative job in handmade pillows, bags, and interior designing. Let's watch. Adia Tukonte and uh, a lot of people know me by Adi and I'm the proprietress of Daraja and uh, yeah. I am Zaina Bimbala Ayani, uh, the founder of Mango Peaches and Lime. I live in Gambia, just moved back home six months ago in September, I think that's six months. and. Um, yeah, we've just opened shop a month ago at the Oasis building. Daraja Boutique, uh, we specialize in leather and we make handmade leather bags made both here in Gambia and in Senegal. And uh, the shop here is an African-inspired shop, and I joined it with my first cousin, who I partnered with together to open up this place because we do a lot of similar things, and we thought it would be great if we both partnered together and create something like this in the Gambia. And we make a lot of, everything here is handmade, African-inspired, um, so yeah, no. Mango Peaches and Lime is a homeware, homeware brand um, that I developed completely out of passion for African fabric, uh, textiles. And um, every time I would come home when I was on holiday from when I was living abroad in, in the UK, every time I'd come home I'd go to the craft markets and buy several things for myself, for my home. I really appreciated the craftsmanship of craft, craftsmanship of um, a lot of the, 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 the carvings and the textiles and how they were woven and um, even looking at the, the people that were making it that are still the artisans and their, um, their social economic conditions here made me want to give them a platform because I truly appreciate what they do if I look at how much they're selling things for and the effort and the, 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 the craftsmanship that they're that they're putting into, into what they're doing. Um, I think that the passion for, for handmade, the passion for sort of African crafts has been in me for a very long time. When I was really young, when I, whenever I had family members come to visit, you know, when they were leaving, I would always go into the craft markets and, you know, I would see the stuff that they were doing and I thought that you know, Gambians had, had talent, 
So it started off a couple of years ago uh, where I had this idea of, I wanted to create a way where we could showcase some of the artisans in the craft market and, and the work that they were doing. So this is just a little bit of how the concept of, of uh, Daraja came about. It didn't start as Daraja. It started actually as something else, but grew into what it is. Uh, today, since, since I was a young girl, I always liked my room to look a certain way, and so it was. It was always a love. Um, again, like I said, the, the the natural fabrics. I just love everything African, everything not exclusively African. I'm not an exclusive person, and it, it, I'm quite inclusive. So, but I have a particular love for for handmade things that are made with with love, uh, things that are passed down from generation to generation, and this is so. It's, it's, it's part of us here, and I think to doing, doing this here means much more to me than doing it anywhere else, because especially in Gambia, where so many people and families, and especially young people, or I, I, I don't want to generalize now, but when I was growing up at least, things like you know, artisanal products, or art, doing something with your hands, or having a skill was somehow looked down upon. It was not you know, wood carvers or basket weavers, were always looked upon as the poor. To okay. me, this was, this is, it inspired me so much to showcase that this, to show to our people that we, you, you don't have to look down upon this. You can make, if, if money and that kind of success, is finan if financial success is what you're really looking for, you can achieve that by actually doing, doing this. If I... There, there were a lot of challenges in, in the way. I think uh, that's, just normal for any business when you're starting up you you have challenges that you face uh, doing business in the Gambia is challenging in itself um, so I would I would say because when I started I started with zero capital all I had was an idea and I had to you know sit down and actually challenge myself and, and, and believe in the dream, believe in the vision that I have, and I had to actually, it was very difficult trying to raise funds initially from the beginning just to, just to start the business. My challenges with the brand was, let's say, shipping, because it was very expensive coming uh, ship to ship from Italy. However, I, I would say my, my experience here in the last five, six months, um, is where I will say I can talk about challenges. And I think my challenges are a really lack of understanding and, and believing in Gambian-made products by the Gambians, or African-made, or things that are from here. Um, that, that's where I find the, the block sometimes. Like at the moment, right now, uh, as uh, Zainab had mentioned, uh, we just opened officially in the beginning of January uh, of this year. So at the moment, we have, like a, <laughs> we have an in-store uh, supervisor, that's Hadi, sitting right over there. Um, but then also, um, as part of Daraja, as part of the work that I do, I work with different local artisans, uh, just as Zainab also works with different uh, local artisans. So I work with the local artisans on a contractual kind of basis. Um, so at the moment, I have about four um, artisans that I work with on a contractual basis. So every time I have an order or every time I want to create, like, create some new products, I'll basically hire them on a contractual basis and they will do the job for me. Yeah. Dreaming of owning a property in a prime location with great proximity and fantastic neighborhood? EJ Investments Sanyang Seaview Estate is the best choice you have been waiting for. Our Sanyang Seaview Estate is approximately 15 minutes drive away from the busy hop of Brusubi roundabout and into the heart of nature where you can have a peaceful and relaxed lifestyle with your family. You can buy a finished four bedroom story with five year flexible payment plan or a service plot with two year payment plan 
plan option. With over 300 homes, you will enjoy big tar roads with covered drainage, modern electrification with solar street lights, gated entrance with security post, and a breath-catching experience of our beautiful sea view and lake view. You can own a home today at our Sanyang Sea View Estate. Call us today on 446-4838 or 325-9220. Visit our website on ejinvestments.net. EJ Investments, first in property. back from the entrepreneur and now to of course um, one of the most important segment of the show that is the special guest and today um, our guest is Mr. Kausu Silla and his colleague Maria Masimaha. Uh, Kausu is the executive secretary for um, of African Youth Commission and also works at the National Council as a program officer Correct me if I'm wrong, sir. Yeah. And Mariama is the Advocacy and Communication Officer for the National Youth Council. Um, he will talk to us with his colleague, of course, uh, about the Pan-African Youth Conference on African Unity and Development, which will be held in the Gambia from March 23rd to the 27th. The conference includes 350 delegates from across Africa to the Gambia. The theme is... Future, um, the theme is Future is Now, which will be centered on issues affecting young people and the continent at large. You're welcome, gentlemen and lady, Thank to you. the brunch. Thank you. Thank you. It is interesting <coughs> to hear yeah. that we will be expecting 350 youth from all across Africa yeah. to the Gambia, yeah. uh, which will also serve as uh, an exposure to yeah. many of them. Now tell me, how is the preparation for this auspicious event? Thank you so much, um, Joy, for having us. Uh, it's a pleasure to um, be on, on the show. Um, the third Pan-African Youth Conference, um, I can say, is the biggest youth platform uh, that is basically led, completely led and driven by young people themselves. Um, this is not the first time, it's the third edition, as uh, you can see. Uh, we had our first um, uh, edition in Addis Ababa in 2017, and last year we were in Harare. So, and this year we are coming to the Gambia. Uh, the Gambia is the uh, host country for Africa Youth, Com uh, Youth Commission. They are hosting our secretariat uh, through the Gambia National Youth Council. Uh, not the first time Gambia hosting um, continental youth conference. Uh, but it's the first time for Gambia to host the African Youth uh, Commission Conference. And we are so excited that uh, we have the support of the Gambia government uh, through the Gambia National Youth Council, which is the umbrella um, body for youth organization uh, in the country. Um, since October last year, we have been uh, engaged in a series of activities, you know, working with the, with the council, but also with the Ministry of Youth and Sport to ensure that all the uh, necessary structures are in place. Uh, the MOU for hosting the conference is signed in October, uh, precisely on the 25th of October, uh, between the Government National Youth Council and the African Youth Commission. Um, we also inaugurated the National Organizing Committee uh, since it is a um, continental uh, conference, so we want to give that a good image of the Gambia. So um, to ensure the conference is well organized, uh, the ministry advised that uh, we set up a national organizing committee uh, which comprises of different youth organizations, the National Youth Council, the African Youth Commission, the Ministry of Youth and Sport, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, uh, but also the United Nations system as the development partner that is supporting um, uh, these efforts as well. So, um, so far so good. I can say that it's very, very promising and then we are optimistic to uh, host um, yet again a very successful conference in March. Now, um, that brings me to a few um, 
uh, points that we'll be discussing yeah. subsequent to what you have mentioned, mm -hmm. and uh, that would be the challenges of leadership. Yeah. Because based on your uh, theme, mm -hmm. that is future is now, yeah. we want you to link it with mm -hmm. our present day situation. Yeah. I believe my panelists would uh, further ask questions yeah. and uh, we hope to get answers. Mm -hmm. Now knowing that the Gambia is 60% of youthful population, um, do you think mm -hmm. that this theme mm -hmm. is achievable? Uh, we believe it is achievable uh, for the fact that if we can have a 39 year old president in France, uh, it's something that can happen in Africa. Uh, our young people are capable, they are educated, they are intelligent, um, and they have innovative ideas and, um, and to take this continent forward. So we believed if um, Francois, uh, we believe if we can have a 39 year old president in France, mm -hmm. this is something that uh, is possible for Africa as well. Uh, not only in the area of political participation that we are looking at, but we are trying to um, uh, see it from the bigger point of uh, view, um, including the economic, the civil space, uh, we believe this is something that our young people should, they are already playing a great role, but we, we want to see them actively taking the lead in this area. If Mark Zuckerberg in, uh, in his age, the 20, in his 20, can create a Facebook, which is now the biggest platform, um, bringing together, you know, different people from different walks of life, it's possible for young Africans to also um, play that uh, uh, leadership role uh, on the continent. All right. All right. Um, um, your, your examples are quite, quite fast. fast. Yeah. Um, the French, the French president, president and Macron, it can be argued that mm. from a continent has mm. a very, very strong um, institutions yeah. for democracy. And we, 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 have, we have we have even young younger sectors in Africa, 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 Instead of inspiring, yeah. they use, uh, use um, I mean, the end of the story, but, story. but, 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 but mm. let, me, let me take you back to a basic. When you when say 300 youth are coming together, 350 over in less, less than three weeks' time, mm -hmm. one, one would attempt to ask specific texts. Do you mm -hmm. have a conversation that goes with this text in the place for this? Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, uh, I can say we are ready. Uh, already we have uh, identified the accommodation side uh, for uh, participants where they will be lodged. All, at the, co 300 all the 350. Um, the conference itself is taking place at Kairaba Beach Hotel. So uh, we have discussed with some partner hotels at nearby um, Kairaba where the participants will be lodged. So for accommodation uh, is already there, is something that's already yes, been yes, sorted out. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, uh, it's, it's something that we have uh, taken into account since the planning stage. Uh, as I said in, in my intro, um, the work started since October last year, and then we've taken all that into consideration. So um, the accommodation site are already identified, and we already blocked those spaces. So we are sure that our uh, delegate will not have any issues regarding the accommodation. And also, and also get get a strong. Very, very good, good international reputation. Yeah. You use uh, programs. And exactly. Share. But many people like that it's not like that. Every day, every day, uh, like, like the Gambian. When you when go, go around, around the world, there's a space for very, very, having, having very good youth programs, programs exactly. and very good youth administrators. Mm -hmm. But it can, but it can be argued that it's not reflected in, in, in a way. way. Yeah. Uh, in the, in the life of the Gambia, the Gambia, Gambia is district district to to the district struggles to almost all have best friends, the district struggles to, you know, get, get back to the amenities, towards how is it in case of the whole question that. How do you think organizing such a transnational constitution, people who are looking forward to Gambia and what are there to showcase for the African Jews in the Gambia? Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Sam. You are right. In 2006, Gambia hosted uh, the AU Heads of State Summit. And during that time, uh, one of the biggest uh, youth development framework, which is called the African Youth Charter, is adopted in Banjul. So it's basically to create that enabling environment
for youth participation in, in, in governance, in decision making at all levels. Uh, already um, to the African Youth Charter, we've, um, in 2016, we've hosted one of the best uh, youth conferences, which is called the Banyan Pulostan on African Youth Charter. And uh, to uh, answer your question, I think already uh, young people are leading. Um, we are happy that um, in 2017 we ran a campaign called Not Too Young to Run, which is uh, an initiative um, started in Nigeria. Uh, it's, 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 a, it's an initiative that encourages young people to take up leadership role in public offices. And through that process, we supported a number of young people. I cannot uh, recall the number, but we supported close to 15 um, to run for National Assembly um, uh, positions. And uh, I can report that um, some of them uh, were able to uh, get a seat in the National Assembly. Uh, we have young people uh, uh, representing us at the National, U U uh, National Assembly. Um, but we have the youngest mayor in the whole of Africa, um, Talib Ben Souda. Uh, which is the city mayor, is the youngest uh, mayor in the whole of Africa. So uh, our young people are leading. Um, they are leading uh, in the area of uh, youth leadership, but also in business. I mean, we have a number of young people that are also young Gambians, entrepreneurs, that are, uh, are pushing the economic empowerment of young people, but contributing greatly to our socioeconomic development. Yeah. yeah so m me, uh, I think we would have a female voice now. Yes. <laughs> So, um, because one of the most challenging issues of, of our time is, um, in Africa is how do Africa create relevant policies that are going to empower young people yeah. who are, uh, some of whom are dying in the seas, going mm -hmm. to Europe, some of whom are being deported back from Europe. Yeah. And, you know, and this, this is the time when you come into uh, have a continent-wide conference yeah. on the issue of youth leadership right there. What do we expect? What, what sort of issues will, are you going to be discussing at mm -hmm. this particular conference and where does it lead us to? Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much, Mustafa. And thank you for having us here, Joy. You're welcome. It's a pleasure. And if I can go straight to your question. Uh, during the conference, we're going to have different thematic areas that we are going to concentrate on. And these thematic areas are aligned to the AYC strategic plan and the Gambia AYC is strategic. Strategic. Oh, yeah. Yeah. strategic plan. The strategic plan and mm -hmm. also the Gambia's um, program of youth, program of action on youth that we have presently developed. So these are the areas that we are going to align and the thematic areas will involve one, um, pan-Africanism and African integration. The other one will concentrate on governance and empowerment. We will also have um, irregular migration that we are talking about. Also, we will have um, health and um, um, well-being, and we also have um, climate change. These are the topics that we are going to concentrate on. And after the conference, we are expecting to come with an outcome which will indicate or will even help the youth to come on and take actions on curbing irregular migration, which is part of your question that we are asking. And also, they will have this open space or safe space where they will take part in political decisions at all levels which will be encouraged and advocated for and as well as um, they will come on board to come up with recommendations that they, fit, they will think it's deemed fitting for them to take it up to the policy makers and for them to at least chip in and take in their leadership part. And basically these are some of the areas that we have. Now let's bring, it, let's bring it, let's bring it home. If, for instance, after the conference, uh, I know you also going to be uh, uh, as 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 youth leaders in the country, also going to be drawing your lessons from this. Yeah. And uh, is there going to be? Is it going to inform in any way the policy directions of the government of the Gambia? I mean, how do you connect it to what is happening in the country, or how will it be connected to what is happening in the country? Um, well, since the, 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 the conference is going to take part in, take place in Gambia, even though we're going to have international delegates, so it's going to be a home driven based conference. Yeah. yeah, so but after the conference is done, I know individual countries will approach the outcome of the conference yeah. in different ways. Yes. 
So I'm saying in the Gambia too, there are plans, isn't there, for, yeah. Yeah. for integration of whatever it is, the outcome of the conferences mm -hmm. into our policy directions. Yeah. yeah, that's where I started first. That's the um, Gambia Program of Action on you know, it's a policy that yes. is formulated for the Gambia. So yeah. that's why these strategic um, or these thematic areas are aligned to that program of action. It is a policy formulated in the Gambia for the Gambia. Yeah. So uh, basically, if I can come in, uh, the Gambia <coughs> Program of Action on Youth is a resolution that emerged from the, our biannual uh, National Youth Conference and Festival uh, that took place in Basse uh, uh, in 2017. So it's the resolution of the young people themselves um, asking uh, the government on um, some of the key important things. But uh, as you can see, the theme of the conference is not limiting or maybe asking the government what you know, can you do for us? But is us, the young people, what can we do as young people to address the issues around youth irregular migration? Uh, of recently, you know, this, uh, the, the social media, we've seen our young people that are, that, 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 that are deported from uh, overseas. So, and up till now, the government have not said anything. So, uh, at National Youth Council, we've been receiving a lot of questions uh, from our this government. What are you doing? What are we doing as young people? So, I mean, it's something that we really need to um, discuss and ensure that we take an active role. If these young people will come, it has to be respons responsible deportation. So, we, the, the government's position needs to be clear. Uh, but for us, for us to achieve that, young people really need to be active uh, in terms of raising their voice, but also playing their part to ensure we have a responsible deportation. But if our young people will also leave this country, uh, their migration should be uh, seen as they are not going to these countries, uh, maybe for I, just to be there for idling, but instead they are going there to contribute, you know, to the uh, economic development of those countries. So it's not like us going there. Uh, without doing anything, or they are seen us as liability, you know. So, but uh, it's, it, it, that's something that we are working on. If I can ask you, since you work on the development of the daily basis, what do you expect governments, <laughs> not just young governments, because my might be a very nice African problem that you are going to have yeah. discussed with African flag, what, what do you use to expect? expect? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mr. Chairman, this is a very important question, and I must say that it's, 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 it's a challenge, but it required the government to have good policies that would address issues of youth unemployment. Uh, people are migrating because of economic reasons. They said we are in our countries, we don't have jobs, you know, we don't have businesses, we don't, I mean, our education systems are not of uh, high quality, you know, so we expect governments uh, in Africa to um, have a better policy to address youth employment, to address um, issues around quality education, uh, but also to empower young people to take part in economic development. The African government have been saying, the ministers have saying, well, if they are supposed to work as well, even with the best salaries we can offer, the best incentive, people will always want to travel because the wages are high in Europe. Uh, I mean, I mean, I mean we, can we can stop there. Yeah, and I, I think I quite agree. Um, bringing that back home, uh, there are issues around the minimum wages. Um, for example, I think our policies are not uh, friendly enough to uh, take those issues into account. So all these things are something that we'll be discussing. We need to have, uh, if we said employment, I mean, they can just create employment and then at the end of the day or at the end of the month you receive $1,000 or 1500 So, I mean, it can still be called employment. But we mean decent employment where these people can um, earn something that will be equivalent to what our brothers and sisters are receiving in uh, Europe or in, in, any, in, in any other part of the world. And you said you're going to one of the things you're also going to be talking about is Pan-Africanism. Mm -hmm. um, I know there are a lot of people who have also um, said that uh, uh, young people, there are young people who leave this country not because they don't have money. Mm -hmm. uh, some spent close to 150,000 to leave, yeah. which they could have put into something. Yes. So there are those who came with an argument that, mm -hmm. in fact, Bakwe 
is also some sort of a mental defect. Like yeah. there are people who just they have convinced themselves that Europe is the heaven. Exactly. Yeah. We are, we are going and we must go. So there are those who say why do we fight in the economic front, mm -hmm. we also need to fight in the ideological front. And yeah. perhaps yeah. that's where the idea of Pan Africanism would come. Right? Exactly. You are correct. I think uh, our young people need to believe in our systems. We need to believe that we can make it in our countries. Uh, we need to um, see our countries or our continent first. Uh, Europe, elsewhere, you know, it's because they are young people believe. We hardly see them, you know, coming uh, from those um, uh, regions or from those countries, you know, to come to Africa. If they are coming here, maybe they are coming for business or something else. But they are not coming maybe to struggle or maybe for hustling or for whatever. So uh, our young people need to believe in our systems. Uh, they also need to play their part. I mean, we cannot leave everything in the hands of government and say okay we want government to do all this for ourselves this is why we are saying leadership must start with ourselves so we must play our part uh, in order to have uh, all these things in place so we cannot have everything on a silver plate you know but as young people we need to um, work very hard to ensure those things are, are in place i guess, I guess you, are you are aspiring, aspiring to come from uh, africa, africa. Yeah. 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 Exactly. Uh, one, one of the things I, I also sometimes convince mm -hmm. myself mm -hmm. like to the on consistent social illegal migration is that because of the breakdown of law and order yeah. in access, access countries, countries like, like Libya, mm -hmm. the, the, the African, African, African can now see that, that okay, okay now, now there is an alternative to get, get to Europe. Europe. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it was impossible at that time because you didn't acquire a visa, you can't go. Mm -hmm. You cannot even access an aeroplane without having the regular visa. But yeah. now here is an alternative. Mm -hmm. People, People can, can get from Libya to go. go. Mm -hmm. Now, now isn't, isn't it sometimes, isn't it not part of, part of your um, itineraries mm -hmm. to ask, to ask African, African, African leaders, leaders to, ask to ask the great political question, what can be done to solve the problems in Libya and other places? But they can help. Mm -hmm. You know, in my if they are to get Africa, for example, in Libya, nobody, nobody dare to go there. Yeah, there. Yeah, it would not be an accessory. So, so, so many governments who have gone royal in any other option, but to stay, but they know they can't go. Yeah. No, I, I think our laws. Uh, uh, our laws are provided in such a way that they are not limiting people's movements. I mean, there is freedom of association, freedom of movement. So they cannot limit anyone uh, that is trying to migrate uh, because they don't know the reasons are not clear at this. At, 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 I'm talking, I'm talking, didn't you see that there is an alternative way, way that is why? Because, because in, the in the past it wasn't happening. Yeah. yeah. People, People who want to go, you don't get to visa or they don't go at all. Yes. But now they are going because that yes, is now an alternative. The so called back way. Yeah. So it's a political program. Exactly. I'm saying, I'm sparring to become leaders. Don't mm -hmm. you come up with this, like, like confront the leaders mm -hmm. as to whether well, one, one part of the problem is, is mm -hmm. there is a way now people to go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean. Irregular. Uh, to be honest, it's not, it's not so illegal. It's, it's not illegal. Problem. Yeah, it is not <laughs> illegal. Yeah, it is not illegal. People are free to move. Yeah. Um, but I think uh, it is our responsibility as young people to ensure that our government creates an enabling environment, but create opportunities for young people to stay and make a living in our in our home countries. Perhaps finally, because I think we are keeping you people for too long and the time is up. Yeah. But there is one key thing I want us to talk about here because you've talked about not too young to run. Yes. Not a big fan by the way. But yeah. I'm supportive. Yes. Uh, not too young to run is a political, if you like, mm -hmm. uh, idea. Mm -hmm. uh, to get Gambians, young people, into key decision making positions. Mm -hmm. If you have looked at the youth programs that we have, the biggest among them is Youth Empowerment Project. I think? I'm not sure. Uh, I mean, we have a quite number of projects that are even bigger than YEP. Yeah. Yep, it's just so 11 million euros. I mean, we have agriculture have projects that are over the year project. That are specifically for you? Uh, I mean, it's cross-cutting. It's not uh, I, I only... Actually, I actually refer to projects that are... Okay, let's suppose you have a lot of projects. Yes. The youth unemployment, I think, is 38%. Exactly. And if youth are 60% of the population, then perhaps 38%, then maybe we are talking about somewhere around two to 300,000 people. Yes. 
Uh, so, with that kind of amount, mm -hmm. and the question of you being prioritized in mm -hmm. development policies, mm -hmm. perhaps what you need is you in key decision making processes okay. to be able to, mm -hmm. because as Bob Marley says, he who feels it knows it. Okay. Right? Is yeah. that the idea? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, that's one of the things that we are trying to advocate for. Uh, if we cannot have young people in all the key government positions, but at least, at least our recommendation will be the the youth, the youth ministry, the ministry in charge of youth matter, youth issues, at least be a young person. Uh, because that way we are, we'll be able to push youth agenda into the uh, uh, government's decisions. So that's going to be one of the recommendations that will come out from, from, from the conference. But then again, you are dealing with a highly, uh, a, pop, a, a, a highly a, a population that suffers from a great deal of apathy. Yes. Uh, they say, we don't, we don't deal with politics. Politics is filthy. Mm -hmm. uh, I hear that very often. Yeah. <laughs> and yes. this is the population you're trying to push into what they perceive to be filthy. Exactly. So, so perhaps you need a bit of conscientization. Right? Exactly. This, this, this is why this platform is created to inspire them, to motivate them, to encourage them to say that, you know, in order for us to solve this problem, we need to be part of it. If you are not part of it, it's difficult. And the, the moment we try to run away from, you know, this politics, for me, politics is not dirty. Politics is about life. It's about our decision. So um, we need to be part of this this um, this this politics in order to solve our issues so it's, it's, it's a way of encouraging you know motivating young people to um, How take many that young people would be at your conference? Uh, national delegate we expecting 150 or so 150 national delegates, 150 national delegates. delegates from across the country even from my body Yes, right. all over, Are all you over. Talking about, uh, national, national. We're talking about the national. So originally, our plan was to have 120 international and 230 national. Um, but then this is changing because of the overwhelming interest we receive from other young people from Africa, uh, other African How countries. Many you expect in a particular uh, uh, in a particular. National. International uh, countries like Nigeria already so it, depend on it depends on their size, you know, the yeah, and the interest, yeah. But on average, I think uh, 15 or so from each country. So the Gambian delegates will come from various aspects of the country, various places in the country. Exactly. And come with the, the, the conference with their own problems. Exactly. Problems peculiar to their region. Exactly, exactly, yeah, so that's it. Thank you very much. You all heard from Kausu. He said, in order to solve the problem, you have to be part of the solution. Yeah. So now, uh, Mr. Uh, Silla, I want you and your beautiful colleague to give us your final word. Thank you, Sima. All right. Thank you very much, Joy. Uh, my final word would be like to the young people, let them come on board and take the ownership. Um, we're here to help them, we're here to be with them. Like Kausu said, they need to be part of the process, the whole process of solving these problems that we are facing here in the Gambia. And the international delegates also, we are telling them they're highly welcome. And we hope that we will have a fruitful conference, inshallah, and all the recommendations that we're coming up with will be fully met. Thank you. Kausu. Thank you so much. Uh, for me, I will thank the Gamba government um, through the Ministry of Youth Transport, the National Youth Council for accepting to host uh, this conference. Uh, we know the resources are limited, but even though they have agreed to host, and all our other partners that are also contributing, the UN system um, uh, that is supporting, and all the other partners that are also contributing. So we really thank them for their contribution. and. We look forward to having yet another successful conference. So our brothers and sisters out there in the African continent, you are welcome. And we look forward to interacting with all of you. Lovely jam. Yeah, yeah, I think uh, uh, it's, it's a very, very good decision. Like I said, Gambia is a very, very good decision. For those who are going to do that session. I hope and pray. And we support all the organizers, you know, very successful in the Thank you. Is the key double? No. Me uh, looking forward to an eventful week. Um, so it's uh, been uh, the first one has been a very eventful one. Uh, 
um, uh, and the, the, the TRRC is resuming not this coming week, mm -hmm. the week in the upper. So it's not going to be coming from TRRC. Mm -hmm. They will come from uh, perhaps an event that the, the committee, the center is going to hold. I, I hope it will be here, the victim center. So, uh, but that's about it. It's been very helpful. Thank you. Um, the information we got from you people, and we um, we are wishing you a successful call. Thank you. Thank you so much, colleagues. Um, viewers, you've all heard from them. But before we leave, I uh, will end by saying, watch out for hotspot and buy for big. Normally, Juve is a grand fee. Juve is a customer. I'm going to introduce my brother Juve. 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 We then they offer any kind of football burger, started from breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Breakfast, then they serve omelette, any kind of omelette burger, more fruit, stem, the same thing they could serve, tea and coffee. Yeah, plan they plan they serve any coffee burger, tam, cafe latte, uh, filter coffee, any kind of coffee burger they could serve, hot chocolate, hot milk. Yeah, plan they serve breakfast, and your lunch. Then they have African dish, then they have European dish, burger, shawarma, um, benachin, uh, kini, benachin and um, beef, uh, this thing, bodamada. With fish, dinner, tam, the same thing. Both of them, then they have uh, European dish. Normally, dinner, then they have breakfast. Breakfast is breakfast, lunch is lunch. Dinner, tam, then a specific, special dinner for lunch. Started from soup, uh, burger. Shawarma, beef, filet or afra, any kind of beef boboga, lamb chop, and whole chicken, half chicken, any kind of chicken boboga, fish the same, extremes, brochet, agape, anything low boga, you can go to shop. Sometimes in the shop, low hamlet is not in the menu. Low hamlet like customer moko like, you know, okay, lila boga, you know, you know, you know, special, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, you know, Natural, apart from natural, then they am tasting uh, ready-made juice like apple, pineapple, and orange. <music> fee normally, lake of test be more number one fee. Any customer of myself, Malalache, the test is good, the food is nice. The demarage is malige na different restaurants. Why come luma gis fini? Since we must start fini, since we open a month for chilla start fini. Why luma gis fini? I never. Malu pas kumasu makogi si bener restaurant. The new fide new tan silen safe always low land dewa. Luin fide am grand or we don't have it in any other restaurants. Is do you give better service? You give good food. The lake am on more everything in life. Yes, good food, good health, good life. That's what people say. So, le lagi si grand or dah.
the arm reservation started from a uh, wedding receptionist, then they get wedding receptionist, bright and brooms, I don't know, both and then go to jail, cakes, birthday cakes, any reservation bubuga like birthday stamp, then go to jail. If in Chunuku launch a family dinner, you then go to jail. Meetings, bo have any reservation, la moine can get reservation, then you after meeting, then I'm dinner, while at dinner, then meeting. Any kind of meeting, bo am not, we can take it, then go to jail. Any kind of reservation, tambo asi, birthdays, weddings, weddings. We no Monday mail, no Monday em tap. We take it. The fact depends the amount of people bung there. Yes, then they have snacks tam, snacks. Any kind of snacks go buga tam. It then the fact they call them come customer me call like money. Okay, they may buga them is out of your menu. It's a snacks, more new. They are calling go buga. Then go they prefer. Then go they defer. Then go they prepare. Any kind of snack go asi. Then go they defer. Starting from spring roll, meat pie, mini pizzas, any kind of snacks. Accessory uh, roll up. Then they defer. Location will be Fajara, Fajara next to Emporium, after Emporium, the Grand Orga am, Sabina Johnson. You know, I'm going to have Emporium, I'm going to have Emporium, I'm going to have Sabina Johnson, then they have Fofono. Normally, so watch Sabina Johnson, then they get a lot of customers, you have to watch Sabina Johnson, you have to feel, you have to feel, you have to feel, you We then they use different numbers uh, starting from official. Official will be not crown, but official will be like prefer like to uh, three triple two, three triple two one five four. Bo Monica grand old number be. Mo soon direct. Bo hamne so call a direct finger. The other official be bo soon bo smoke ame. Bo land use WhatsApp. Bo mo try contact us on bo skade ame. In Dreaming of owning a property in a prime location with great proximity and fantastic neighborhood? EJ Investments Sanyang Seaview Estate is the best choice you have been waiting for. Our Sanyang Seaview Estate is approximately 15 minutes drive away from the busy hop of Busubi roundabout and into the heart of nature where you can have a peaceful and relaxed lifestyle with your family. You can buy a finished four bedroom story with five year flexible payment plan or a service plot with two year payment plan option. With over 300 homes, you will enjoy big tar roads with covered drainage, modern electric electrification with solar street lights, gated entrance with security post, and a breath-catching experience of our beautiful sea view and lake view. You can own a home today at our Sanyang Sea View Estate. Call us today on 446-4838 or 325-9220. Visit our website on ejinvestments.net. EJ Investments, first in property.